Hey, Calibrate Tools family. Don't you hate it when you jump in your car and you're getting ready to go somewhere important and the car doesn't start? Well, is it the battery or the alternator? The only way to find out is with one of these right here. It's called a voltmeter or a multimeter. So stay tuned. And we're going to learn how to check to see if your alternator works in this video. Stay tuned. <music> Okay, so your car won't start. It can't be the battery because you just bought a new one or you just checked it the other day, so it must be the alternator, right? Well, that's the next logical thing to look at when this happens or the next thing that goes through your mind at least. So how do you check the alternator properly given the modern cars that we have today? Now, there are two ways, a good way and a bad way. Let's talk about the bad way first. Now, I'm sure some of us still do it, but back in the days, we used to check the alternator by idling the engine and disconnecting the negative battery cable right there. And if the engine is still running for a while, that means the alternator is still working. However, that may not be the safest method of checking to see if your alternator is still working properly. You see, the minute you disconnect the negative battery cable to check the alternator, the alternator is now compensating for the lack of battery power, the lack of a battery in the circuit. So the voltage regulator, which is found on the inside or the back of your alternator case, or it's sometimes called the ECM in the late models today. ECM stands for engine control module that regulates the voltage through a circuit. Either of those, the voltage regulator or the ECM, makes the alternator put out more volts because there's no battery connection when you test it that way. That is by taking the negative battery cable off to test it. Now, depending on the RPM the engine is running at, the alternator can put out up to 150 volts. That's way higher than the max output an alternator should have in volts, which is around 13.5 to 15 volts. You can literally burn up the electronic systems in these modern cars by using the method of taking off the negative battery cable to test if your alternator works. Before all the computer chips and over-engineered electrical systems put into cars to sell you on them, you didn't have to worry about this but now you do. So I wouldn't recommend testing your alternator by pulling off the negative battery cable just to see if it works. Instead, you should get a voltmeter or multimeter to test your alternator without having to disconnect the battery cable or take anything apart. Now we did a video on how to use a digital multimeter on a car battery. Go check it out if you haven't already. We found out that a fully charged battery should be between 12.6 to 12.8 volts. We want to make sure we check the voltage with the car engine off because once it's started, the alternator will take over and increase the voltage a bit. Right now, we just want to check the pre-start voltage of the battery. So we're going to take our voltmeter or multimeter and turn the dial to 20 volts DC. Once again, we choose 20 volts DC because the max voltage for a good battery without a load on it is 12.8 DC. That's direct current. Batteries dispense direct current. So we don't need to put the dial on anything above 20 volts DC. We also want to make sure that the negative cable is in the common port. That's this right here, where it says COM. That stands for common. And that's simply the grounding or neutral port. So we're going to take this out of this port and put it in the common port. Then we wanna take our positive lead and attach it to the positive terminal on the battery. And take our negative lead and attach it to the negative terminal on the battery.
So we got about 12.95. That's a little bit high. It's over the 12.8 threshold, but no need to worry just yet. Sometimes a battery may give a reading that's higher than the actual voltage of the battery. And that's called a surface charge. A surface charge happens when the battery is just recently charged. And it's usually common with lead acid batteries, but give it a little time and that surface charge will disappear. And I was driving it a bit, so that's probably what happened. But as you can see, the reading has decreased. Actually, it went down to 12.81 at one point, then it went back up, but it's fluctuating. In any case, it is dissipating slowly but surely. So the next thing we wanna to do to make sure our alternator is working correctly is to get in the car, start the engine, idle the engine, and make sure that all lights and accessories are off. And if that reading jumps into the 13.8 to the 15.3 range, we know that our alternator is working correctly. Okay, so our reading is within that 13.8 to 15.3 range. So that means our alternator is working okay. So what causes an alternator to go bad? Well, most of the time, it's time itself. The older the alternator, the more likely it's gonna conk out on you, as they say. The more likely it's gonna fail. So the more you use it, just know its lifespan is shortening. Fluid leaking onto the alternator is also a major cause of failure and malfunction. Engine oil or power steering fluid are usually the culprits in this case. Then there's human neglect and abuse. Idling your car while using all of the accessories at the same time, like lights, radio, uh, cigarette lighter, etc. All of those put undue stress on the alternator, leading to failure later on down the line. Again, shortening its lifespan. Oh yeah, if the alternator is near the bottom of the engine, it's more susceptible to water and salt erosion from wet areas that you're driving over. That water can get into the alternator and really damage it. So guys, if you learned how to check your alternator to see if it's working correctly with a simple tool like this, a voltmeter, you can go down to your hardware store and grab one. Hit the like and subscribe button. Thank you, and I'll see you guys in the next one.